Okay, so it's now the end of August 2011 and vSphere 5 has just been released. So what better way to start off a series of vSphere 5 videos than with a quick install of the new ESXi 5. In the lab here, what I'm doing is I'm just running this um, as a virtual machine. So I've mounted the ISO file for the virtual machine that's just booting up now. Okay, so here we have the welcome screen, so I'm just going to click enter and accept the end user license agreement. So ESXi will now scan for available hard drives. Uh, it may take a few seconds. And here we go, I've found the local hard drive. I've allocated 10 gig for this installation. So um, I'm just going to install ESXi on this drive. So I'm going to press enter here. I just want a US default keyboard layout, so press enter. Here I'll type in my root username and password. So if you remember in ESXi 4, uh, we actually entered the root password after the installation. So now it looks as though VMware has changed it and we're putting in our root password during the installation. Okay, so my passwords match. Press enter. Now because I'm running this within VMware Workstation, uh, I will get this error message that hardware virtualization is not a feature of the CPU or is not enabled in the BIOS. So I won't worry about it. I'll press enter. I can still continue with the installation. And here's just a summary that we'll be installing ESXi on the basically the local hard drive. So I'm going to press F11 and the installation should begin. Okay, now the installation's complete, so what ESXi needs to do is reboot the machine. So I'm just going to press enter and the machine will reboot automatically. Right, so ESXi is rebooted. Uh, we're at the startup screen now. So uh, next step, what we're going to do is we're going to configure some IP addressing, DNS, uh, host name, DNS suffix, and so on. So let's press F2, and it's going to ask us for our root password. So let's put our password in, and that should bring us to the menu. So here we can uh, configure a new root password if we like, but we won't be doing that now. Um, but what we want to do is concentrate on configuring the management network. So I'm going to press enter here. And I've only got one network adapter here, as you can see. But if you have multiple adapters, what you can do is actually select which adapter you'd like the management network installed on. So um, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'll go escape to go back to the menu. I can set a VLAN if I like, because I'm on a home network, I've only got one big VLAN, so I'm just going to leave that. Uh, and here, what we're going to do is set a static IP address. So I'm going to select user static IP address, go down to the IP addressing, and I'm going to give it 192.168.1.100. I'll leave the subnet mask, and default gateway is correct, 1.1. So I'll press enter. Uh, don't have IP version 6. DNS configuration, uh, my primary DNS server 192.168.1.1, uh, you can set a secondary DNS server here if you like. My host name, I'm going to be calling it VM host, I'll press enter, and I can add in a custom DNS suffix, so I'm going to add in uh, vmlab.local, and vmlab.local is actually the DNS suffix for my Active Directory setup which we'll probably be using, most probably be using later on. Okay, so we've done that now. So let's click Escape. And after setting in the IP addressings, what the server needs to do is restart the management network. So I'm just going to press Y. The management network will restart. Um, you can also force it here. Um, restart management network. You can do some tests, um, pinging and so on. Uh, you can restore the network settings back to factory default. Um, we can
can configure the keyboard. We've got a few troubleshooting troubleshooting options here. Um, enable the ESXi shell, enable SSH, modify ESXi shell timeout and restart management agents. So we can uh, explore them, feel free to do that. Uh, so here there's a few new options that VMware's added in. Um, on the view system logs, we have the syslog, we have um, VM kernel which is new, also virtual center agent and VMware ESXi observation log. So that's all new stuff. Uh, let's just take a quick look at one of them which will be the VM kernel. If I press number two and here we go to log of the VM kernel here. Um, I can just press the down arrow and scroll through it, have a look and uh, have a look at that. Feel free to browse through it, explore, test it. Um, I'll press Q. Can view some support information about the server here, serial number, license numbers, SSL thumbprint, uh, ASX tag, BIOS firmware, BMC firmware and PLSA firmware. Um, we can also reset the, the whole system back to factory defaults as well. Uh, I've only ever used this well, two times, once in the lab to see how it goes. And second time uh, when I was installing a Nexus 1000V switch and kind of didn't work as I planned. So I locked myself out and uh, the only way to get back in was either to rebuild the ESXi or just reset the system configuration. So basically I used this option and worked great. Okay, so now we're going to log out and uh, we'll be back at this screen. So as you can see, to download the tools to manage ESXi, I'm going to browse to HTTP 192.168.1.100. So I'm just going to go over across to my Windows XP machine, which is over here. All right, I'm going to fire up Firefox. Uh, I'm going to browse to my server, 192.168.1.100. Uh, you'll get the certificate error, so let's just, um, it's going to add an exception because I don't want it to ask me anymore. If you're using Internet Explorer, you can just click on confirm. All right, now I'm on the web, web interface of the ESXi client, oh, sorry, ESXi host. So what I want to do here is I want to download my, um, the vSphere client. Uh, so I'm just going to click on that. So that's the name of the exe file. I'll save the file. And I'll just pause the video here and I'll come back once this is finished downloading. So the vSphere 5 client's now finished downloading. Uh, what we're going to do is just install it here. So I'll just click run. Select the language that you want to install and we'll click OK. Click next, click next, accept the license agreement, type in a username, type in VMLab, VMLab, click next, I will install into the default directory and we'll click next, and install, begin the installation. Okay, and the VSV client installation is completed now. Uh, I just wanted to point out one thing from uh, earlier on, and that was the size of the VSV client. As you can see up here, um, it's 350 megabytes, which is um, quite a substantial size compared to VSV4 client, which I believe was around the 200 and so meg. So there's probably about a 100 meg increase there. So now let's just click finish and I'll just going to close these other windows and let's launch our client. Okay, so we're going to be connecting through to 192.168.1.100 which is the IP address that we've set on our ESXi server and I'm just going to be logging in with my uh, root account. 
So I'll just type in the password that I set and we're just going to click login. Add the certificate warning, I'm just going to click install this certificate and ignore. That way I won't get that warning anymore. And here we go, we've connected through to our ESXi 5 server. Um, we haven't installed any license, so of course it's going to be running in evaluation, uh, which you've got 60 days to play around with. So let's click OK here. Uh, you'll see my server here, 192.168.1.100. Uh, if you did use a uh, host name, you'll see the host name here. Uh, just make sure that you can obviously resolve the host name to the IP address uh, before trying to connect to it. And uh, if we click on summary here, we can see some information about our ESXi server, our CPU usage, memory, and up the top here you can see the, the version and build numbers and your uh, evaluation, how many days you've got remaining. So that concludes this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to visit my website at www.sysadmintutorials.com. Thank you very much and I hope you have a great day. Goodbye for now.